The Fragile 5 were an investor's nightmare. The Fragile 1.5 are an opportunity. Make no mistake, it was structural fragilities that took down the Fragile 5 and EM. Cyclical growth was strong when the shock hit. Shorting the high carry Fragile 5 economies was spine chilling, but members that have left or are on the verge of leaving now become currencies that will allow you to short the ones who refuse to adjust their structural fragility. But EM is not a swimming pool. The risk surface doesn't form uniformly if the drain holes are at one end of the pool. So where are the risks? Well, we use over 200 indicators to populate our risk map using four types of risks, structural, cyclical, quality of growth, and policy and political. And that helps us classify EM economies into three risk buckets. The ones with high structural or cyclical risks, Turkey, and after a distance, South Africa, and only then Mexico. High structural risks, some cyclical support, China services, Korea, and North Asia. And cyclical risks, but not really structural ones, Brazil, followed at a distance by India and China manufacturing, and then another big gap to Indonesia, Poland, and Russia. So who makes up the fragile 1.5 now? Well, Turkey is about 0.75 of that 1.5 that remains. South Africa is 0.5 and Brazil 0.25. India and Indonesia have pretty much left the club. Turkey's structurally low savings haven't been addressed, thanks in no small part to diluted monetary policies that says the stance is tight when credit growth is around 20% and inflation is in double digits. The quality of growth is terrible and offsets strong economic domestic momentum with exports being the key exception. South Africa is much lower in terms of risks. Politics and structural issues dominate, while the recession means that near-term risks are actually limited. Its own structurally low savings have been addressed, but only partially, but the investment trend is still downwards. Brazil, but politics and cyclical risks dominate the issue. Political risks and the structural hangover of non-performing loans, which has crushed credit growth, and the newly created fiscal deficits have created cyclical downside, and that is affecting monetary policy too. But at least they're responding. Now, India, which follows Brazil after a gap, has its slowdown in cyclical and policy-related issues. The construction slowdown has its roots, as we predicted back in December, in November's re-denomination. If the RBI does not resort to cutting again, and it is reluctant to do so, it will have to tolerate a period of slow growth in India. Indonesia is even further behind India in terms of risks, thanks to the limited downside cyclical risks, and structural risks just aren't that many. Growth has been keep it thanks in part to the ongoing state-owned enterprise consolidation, but construction activity is firming and that will help. One thing we didn't like is that recent heavy equipment imports have found their way into mining and agriculture. These are low productivity activities that were part of the Dutch disease. Some upside is okay, but too much is not. And finally, in our country-by-country -country analysis of risks, we look at all of these economies, as well as China, North Asia, Russia, Poland, and Mexico. And just in case the summer has left you with a taste for brevity, we've summed up as much as we can in our risk heat map. The closer each economy is to a particular corner, the greater the dominance of that type of risk. An economy in the center then has all four risks in equal measure. The color of each economy's circle tells you our assessment of the overall risk. Russia in green, South Africa in orange, and Turkey in red. While the dots within each country's circle show how we think about individual risks, contributing to the overall picture. For example, the upper right-hand side dot, which stands for cyclical risk, is at worrisome levels in India, but green in Turkey. Policy risks are represented in the lower right-hand side, and for Brazil, that dot is red. And structural risks, those are in the lower left-hand side. India and Indonesia both show green. Russia shows an orange because the future path of productivity is less certain and both Turkey and Korea show red, but for very different reasons. Thanks for watching.